Hi everyone, welcome. This is the People Management Association of the Philippines, the Pima podcast that we call it People Watch, where there will be no motherhood statements, no hiding behind obsolete theories and adages, and no time to beat around the bush. Just real talk with real people. And this is our very first episode. And we are very fortunate to have with us Miss Angelic Rue. And she is actually with EDC. And we're going to be talking to her more about her program. And this is a very interesting topic. Opportunity 2.0. Who gets another chance? Who deserves it? And what happens next? So here with us, and I'd like to introduce her to all our listeners. She is with the private sector. She is a private sector advisor of USAID Opportunity 2.0. She's been in the education and training field for 22 years because she probably started when she was still eight years old. And she taught learners <laughs> from various ages and nationalities. So she joined the Education Development Center under AWARE One, a workforce development program for in-school youth. And she's the director for programming and training for Teach for the Philippines before she returned to EDC to work on AWARE Two, which prepared youth for work in the digital economy. I'm not going to prolong this introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Angelique. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for having me and uh, USAID Opportunity 2.0. Thank you so much for accepting our invite and be be our first guest for People Watch. <laughs> wow. And yes, <laughs> nakaka excite and everybody's quite jittery here. Martin has is in his 12th coffee for the day. Miss Sarah's <laughs> in, this, in her fifth coffee. So, I really like the the title itself. It got, it latches on opportunity 2.0. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's it? What is it all about? Right. So um, you're not the first one to say that, Jov. Uh, when people hear opportunity 2.0, they are very interested, even if they don't know yet that the focus of the program is for vulnerable out of school youth. So essentially. Opportunity 2.0 is like giving second chances to our vulnerable out of school youth. So that's where um, that's the essence of the program name. Oh, good. Because in my relationships, hanggang point five lang naman yung binibigay na chance sa akin, Angelique. <laughs> so hindi ako nakalusot sa one. So two. <laughs> so two point oh. Like, yeah. Yeah. So yes. why the focus on out of school youth? Mm-mm. So 2.0 actually. Um, so I, I, I'll go into explaining now what USAID opportunity 2.0 is. Go ahead, is. please. Yes. Yes. So um, it is a systems strengthening program, and our two main partners are DEPED ALS, so the Department of Education Alternative Learning System, and mm-hmm. TESDA, Technical okay. Education Skills Development Authority, and. Mm-hmm. The 2.0 actually it can reference um, ALS 2.0, so that's the roadmap of alternative learning system. Na parang upgraded na siya from the previous um, system curriculum. Um, so meron talaga, all... yeah, meron talaga opportunity point one point oh. Yeah. Walang opportunity one point <laughs> oh. Akala kasi, akala kasi you have to, you, parang sequel, ano, parang series, you have to, you have to review one point oh. Parang web two point oh din yan, no? Yeah, so yeah, yung digital the, space then pwedeng i-allude. Oh. I'm quite interested because, yeah. you know, a lot of our out-of-school youth, there are various reasons why they actually yes. left school. Correct. So, would you profile them, for example, is there Correct. a specific group that you you provide opportunities to? Yes. Okay. So the first thing is um, there are 4 million out of school youth wow. in the Philippines. And that was the statistic in 2021. And it could have bloated or lessened depending on who went back to school uh, yes. after the pandemic. And mm-hmm. it's interesting, it's already 2023. But if we attend conferences, seminars with industry, with education, parang ganun pa rin ang pinag-uusapan yung post-pandemic. So yes. we are still really feeling um, the impact of that. So um, the profile of our youth, um, they're 4 million in number, uh, around that number, are ages 15 to 24. Mm-hmm. And they may have dropped out of junior high or senior high, hindi tumuloy to the next level. 
Um, and as you said, yung profile niya iba-iba. The, the reasons are and as varied. Very varied, and it's not. I'll use a term, ha. It's not cognitive in nature. Hindi sa hindi kaya nung bata. Mm, um, okay. They have children uh, mm-hmm. to, to feed. They have. Um, they need to work because they don't have enough resources. Hindi makaaral, hindi makatraining kasi kailangan magtrabaho. Um, but one of the reasons is very interesting. Is our youth of today also think that education and training will not help them find jobs? Oh, okay. Maybe yes. it's because of the things that you know they probably. I don't. I, I think it's part of the confidence that they're getting that with access to the internet, they're getting to know a lot, lot more than you know the others do. Yes, probably. actually, job. You hit the nail on the head, talaga, with that comment. Because our youth today are Gen Z, so Gen. And yes. Generation Z, they're digital mm-hmm. natives. So, <laughs> minsan, parang I'm skipping na, dami kong gusto sabihin. But anyway, um, <laughs> in, instead of training and education, they're already earning money by selling ukay-ukay exactly. through yes. Facebook Live. You know what I mean? So, yeah, no, oh. yeah. I see a lot of people just, you know, along the side of the streets, they suddenly dance, break into dance, and then there's a camera <laughs> looking at them. And then, and then I, I know it's a TikTok <laughs> dance, probably. I can relate, Angelique, because I'm within the age range. <laughs> <laughs> As, um, I'm I'm still 20, 28-ish. If you say so. <laughs> yeah, 28-ish times two yata. Yeah. So, when you say that it's not about cognitive, ano, may, pero, I'm, I, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to you, you, you ask this na, in terms Mm-mm. of, meron ba tayo mga hindi pwedeng mag-qualify? Like for example, the yung youth na may history of drug abuse, yung mga may may mga offenses for example Ay, mga yung not mga at cases all. we are super inclusive in fact ang deped als it's implemented um sa ating uh, jail sa ating oh, uh, okay. yes yes so we reach really the um the most vulnerable ang qualifying ano lang natin is uh, 15 to 24 because Age, ito, yes. yes ito yung um pinaka serve ng USAID Opportunity 2.0 program because ito yung pwedeng they could be tapped uh, as human resource pero hindi sila natatap because nga hindi nakatapos ng education or training and yun, they're, they're out of school youth so, mm-hmm. but it, they could, you know uh, if they have taken drugs in the past they could be in jail, they could be PWD, young mothers in fact, job in some of our trainings Para siyang, ano, a children's party because our young mothers they bring their kids. So they bring the kids. They karga din kami ng bata when we do training. So it's that okay. inclusive. Mm-mm. So that's that's really quite heartwarming considering that really it's when you say opportunity 2.0, it's heartfelt that people get a, ch- a second chance. My question is, pag the fallout, for example, hindi na, hindi tumuloy, tapos biglang bumalik. Is there opportunity 3.e, a 3.0, 4.0 for them, or on a single pass lang? Or yeah. Oh no, no single passes. That's the beauty of our again our. Uh, I'll go back to what I said earlier. So it's a system strengthening program. We really mm-hmm. are supporting Deped Als and Pesta because they are the ones that give education and training to the youth. And yes. Deped Als and Pesta, they do not say no to anyone. Anyone who, in, who wants to enroll, to knock on their door, kung hindi kaya, hindi kaya ng formal education or training, pwedeng sa barangay level, sometimes yes, ang deped yes. else natin, under the trees nagtuturo. So, pag nag-fall out and they want to go back, go. No, no one is talagang, ano, uh, it's really inclusive. In, in, in my youth, Angelic, I really love to learn under the tree. Kaya hindi ako pumapasok sa classroom halos. Eh. Pinatawag na ako ng teacher. But andiyan ka pa sa tree. No, so, the, the flexibility is very admirable. Correct. But I got this information, Angelic, and it's quite interesting because I, I looked at this and the results so far of the program. And I, I'll go over this very, very briefly. There were mm-hmm. three, 33,000... Uh, yes. 33, about 33,257 youth reached as far as uh, the the numbers were then. And then 569 found jobs and 205. And this is the best part. They were not only in, 
encouraged to find jobs, they were also encouraged to be their own entrepreneurs, right? Yes, yes. Yes, and then, and others of 528 actually pursued higher level of education. Mm -hmm. Now, if you combine the results so far, that sums up to about a thousand two, a thousand three. So, yung thirty three thousand natin in terms of the the Mm-mm. yung reach, no. So, yeah. ano po yung ano po yung process? Is that a yeah? Uh, it, ba? Or, yes. Mm-mm. Ang galing mo mag math job. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> I calculate ako dito <laughs> <laughs> So, yung we have technical terms kasi we we operate under of course um targets we have indicators we have goals and mm-hmm. you 33000 that is what we call youth reach and okay. those are the ones that have undergone life skills training under debit mm-hmm. als or okay. 21st century work readiness training under tesda so yes. But uh, it's so fancy, lahat ng sinabi ko, pero essentially soft skills training yun. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, okay. Yes. Ang, ang bigger net natin, actually yung 33,000 is very small because our yes. goal is really to reach 180,000 youth. In, in, in a, what's the, in, the time span? It's a five-year program. So we began at the height of the pandemic, just a, a yes. week before the announcement of the lockdown. And so, mm-hmm. I, again, I want to say so many things. So, essentially, we lost two <laughs> years because, yes. yeah, nakatago ang bat ka sa bahay, right? Exactly. So, ang layo namin sa 180,000, but it's not a problem because, as mentioned, we are a system strengthening program. We are not just capacity building. Like, we don't go to the streets and say, oh, I see yung auto school you dyan, itatrain namin kayo. Our partners are Deped as and Testa. It's their mandate mm-hmm. to give training uh, and education to vulnerable youth. So, even after the program is completed in 2025, tuloy ang saya. They're still training. So, yung yes. 180,000 actually, it's just a reach target for the five years. Pero mga ang anak yan, definitely, after, definitely, even after the program. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. I, my, my son, by the way, actually just mm-hmm. finished senior high last year. And he nice. told me that mm-hmm. when they started during the pandemic, there were about mm-hmm. forty-eight of them, mm-hmm. and then when the when when the year ended, school year ended, there were only about eighteen. Oh wow! Nineteen left. Yeah, and and I think the the number is higher because some of those out of school youths are actually, yung hindi obvious na out of school youth. Right, diba? right. Mm-hmm. right. So mm-hmm. the thing is, and and. and the concern right now is although it's not it's not really yes sinabi niya na po it's cognitive no it's not cognitive mm-hmm. na hindi sa hindi kaya mm-hmm. paano po yung paano yun the, the, the soft, soft skills approach mm-hmm. paano po yun talaga na mai-encourage sila knowing that they probably think they already know more than they they they, they actually do <laughs> So, actually, ano po yung mga bubble bursting activities natin or anything <laughs> in the program that can actually, you know, bring them down to earth? Right. Uh, you know, it's interesting that your, um, ano ba, yung latag mo is that way. That's how you're framing it. Because, actually, the ones that need pulling to the ground are the private sector, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, yeah. the industry, and maybe yes. families. Because, again, these are digital natives. Yes. Um, in terms of soft skills, tong Gen Z natin, they're very interested to learn. Um, they're, I will say, I know, ha, previous generations, they're not Moorish or yung masyadong um, ano ba yan, emo like the previous generation, yung millennials. Yes. Or, oh, yung generation ni Miss Sarah, yun yun. Yung generation, wow, si Miss Sarah, oh. Yung mga emo yun eh, mga emo. Mga emo, oh. or yung previous generation like Gen X, siguro generation, magka-generation tayo, job na Mga wa- wapakels daw, mga ganyan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> si Gen Z, they, they want to be guided. They they want to learn. Um, but the space in which they operate is really, kahit nasabihin natin yung lower income at yung mga kulang ang resources, digital talaga yung mga yan. Hihiram niya mm-hmm. ng telepono from whoever um, to, to find. So, yeah, to, I have two things to say. So, Ang kailangan i-bring down actually is the private sector. And so, what we did in the program is, instead of saying, Uy, tulungan nyo yung vulnerable out-of-school youth. No, we say job. 
okay. These are digital natives with natural grit. Mm-hmm. No, bago pa na uso ni Angela Duckworth yung grit na yan ng Pilipino, magrit talaga eh. Yes, talaga. So, oh. 'di ba? Lalo pa dito so, sa Cebu. Yes, oh, kasi I'm, yes. I'm from Cebu and sa amin yung great nagiging great din eh. So, okay pa rin. Oh. <laughs> okay yun ah. <laughs> Uy, may family ako from Car Car. So... Oh, yes. That's where Lechon is. I think. Yes. Yeah, Lechon. The famous Lechon <laughs> of Cebu is in Car Car. Charon and Lechon. Yes. yes. Oh. Wow. So, mag-great talaga sila. So, what we did was we repackaged these uh, uh, out of school youth so that the industry will see them as valuable employees mm-hmm. or valuable partners in business uh, and not maawa kayo sa kanila tulungan. That's, that's not who the Gen Z are. Eh? Even the ones who are, you know, not so gifted with uh, economic uh, resources. So, that's one. Pero going back to soft skills, job. para ang daldal ko, sorry, please cut me. No, it's, it's okay. Very, it's okay. Very oh, interesting. Interesting topic. Yes. <laughs> Itong soft skills is anywhere from personal development to interpersonal communication to collaboration, you know, um, uh, workplace habits. Um, humility, uh, meron ba? Hmm, wala humility <laughs> per se, pero meron values yung na grounding, section. Yung grounding, ano? Yung parang yes. grounding, yes. Oo, oh, oh. so... Oh. You, those are the skills that according to our private sector partners and with the nod of PMAP are more difficult to teach in in youth, in potential exactly. employees. Exactly. Yes. It's like parenting again, all over again. And correct. And yes. And speaking of parents, how do you how do you loop in the parents? That's a really good question. <laughs> so we have a mechanism which we call the Youth Development Alliance. Mm-hmm. Um, so our partner is Deped Als, Tesda, and we do system strengthening there. Pero pag masyadong magaling na si Deped Als at Tesda sa kanilang ginagawa, pero ang bata yeah. umuwi sa barangay, sa space niya, tapos wala namang support, parang kulang din yung um, system of the, you know, the education and the training. So mm-hmm. there's this uh, very how do we call it? It's an innovative mechanism and it gathers at city level job uh, mm-hmm. all the national line agencies. Of course the LGU ang pinaka chair nito is the mayor and we okay. are implementing in 15 sites. So the mayor is chair um and probably has an alter ego or yung parang pinaka uh, uh, nagsisecretary at dun sa YTA. I think, yeah. Considering yes. the, how busy mayors are. Correct, correct. Yes. And youth groups are part of that. Um, uh, private sector, uh, again, as mentioned, all the national line agencies. And the family can also be yes. part of that. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I think you pointed out something na sobrang critical kasi uh, I think we have to be more deliberate talagang to ano ba, systematically engage the parents. And exactly. not just through, you know, that mechanism. Kasi ang daming players doon eh, DTI, DOLE, DOST. So, dapat talaga merong diretso sa family. Yes. Yes. Lalo pa yung mga families na demanding inahanapan ng return of investment kahit wala sa investment sa mga anak nila. That's true. And, and that's quite tragic. And then, mm-hmm. and then that actually adds pressure to the youth. Correct. Correct. Is if there they component... even have parents, there's you know, some if they have... na lang. Mm-mm. So is there a component there that actually provides support for the mental health? Yung mga, like counseling, for example, meron ba? That's a super good question again. Um, actually, Education Development Center, that's where I um, I work, um, it's a very strong <laughs> um, ano ba, training giver or information giver yes, of yes. mental health. Oo. And Nung pumayo yung pandemic, ano din, parang nag-surface lahat nitong organizations that have long been talking about um, mental health um, and wellness. <laughs> yes, naging uh, uso bigla eh. Oo, oh, naging uso. So, we have um, what we call peer coaching. So, it's a, ang laki kasi ng program job, ang dami niyang components. Yeah. Pero one one component is peer coaching and leadership um, activities where we gather the youth and you know, the, we, we give capacity building to the youth, nagiging leaders sila, and they meet um, occasionally, uh, however often they want. And these are the spaces where, yung uso, sinasabing safe space, that they can just talk to each other, 
they are each other's support, they're given uh, space for their voice to shine. So, there is that component in the program. And there are some topics na pinag-uusapan na deliberately um, mental health ang kanyang yeah. focus. Yes. Para very intentional siya, Ms. Angelique. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. The thing is, there are so many components of the program that we may not be able to cover. Lalo yeah. pag, you know, like a podcast like this, we don't, right. we, we won't be able to show the any chart, for example. Is there any way we can access the information for our oh, for our listeners? Yes, because we have an official website. We also okay. have a Facebook page. So, oh, yes, hindi tayo nagkukulang sa ganyan, yes. Oh, sh- should I be mentioning the... Yes, please. And we will include that in our, you know, teasers mm. and flyers. Yes. Okay. So, well, the website is no very place. easy. Opportunity.org.ph Opportunity.org.ph Very good. And your Facebook? The Facebook? Ay, mas mahaba. Mas mahaba. <laughs> Oo. Ay, uh, ano pala? USAID Opportunity mm-hmm. 2.0. That's it. Okay. USAID Opportunity 2.0. So, yung point yes. lang nandun sa between 2 point and Yes. Two, and we also are on LinkedIn for our PMAP and private sector partners. And we also are on Twitter. Now, this is the best time to talk about the role of organizations like Pima. Now, our main audience for the podcast, by the way, is, right. are, of course, PMAppers all over the Philippines yeah. and outside of the Philippines. So, uh-huh. how can they how can they provide timely, meaningful, and talagang measurable assistance Mm-mm. to this program? I like how you use the word meaningful because a lot of yeah. uh, people forget. <laughs> para lang kasi, you know, parang... It's 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 for show. For example, yung tree Correct. planting niyan na basta ka lang nakapagplant, hindi mo naman talaga pinapala kung lumaki talaga. Correct! And, Correct! Oh, oh. So, Check something like list. this, mm-hmm. yes, something like this is so, so important. You don't you don't hold on and let go. You right. really have to support this all the way. So, how can Pima do that? Right, right. So, hindi tayo checklist. We want meaningful. So, exactly. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. So, first of all, um, one of the sources of the bloated out of school youth number then is medyo mahina I'll say it the way it is <laughs> ang ating uh, workforce development systems in the country because yes. at local and national level there is no sustained leadership and or communication on three things so the supply side mm-hmm. which is yung em- employees or yung yung bata essentially yes the demand side, which is PMAP, the industry, and may pangatlo yan, hindi lang siya supply and demand. It's the youth dreams. Okay, wow. So, that's a problem. So, for example, and again, I have so many things to say, parang I'm shooting all over the place. So, <laughs> for okay, example, okay. <laughs> in, in a site, um, ang demand is automotive. Kasi ang daming mga, I won't mention names, pero yung mga big ano, automotive um, players, ganyan. Yeah. So, sila mm-hmm. yung mga lumalapit sa amin na, oh, we need technicians, etc. Of course, when you ask the supply side, sila kasi, again, these are digital natives. Sasabi nila, oh, but I, I want uh, something to do with IT. Computers, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh-oh. Or I want to work in an office. Patay na ang demand side. Nakulangan yeah. na ng supply agad. Exactly. Namimili kasi Yes, and so that's something that we really need to think about. And I know it's a big statement, but not just the private sector, but as a nation talaga, now we need to include the supply, uh, not only the supply and demand, but the youth dreams. Um, mm-hmm. But to answer your question, how we can have relevant partnerships. So there are three pathways where we um, uh, guide the youth to exit. So first is, of course, wage employment. So yung mga gusto magtrabaho. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one is self-employment, the ones that want to put up businesses. And the other one is further education or training. Yes. So the space where PMAP can really partner uh, and support our youth is through, uh, first, of course, work immersion. Testing mm-hmm. muna nila, uy, okay ba tong bata na to? Nag soft skills training yan. Nag work readiness training yan. You know, and daming training dinaanan sa opportunity to point out. So work immersion can be anywhere from 40 hours um, but there are some private sector partners who say, Uy, pwede bang 360 hours para talagang, you know, um, they get their feet wet. And then, yes. they can employ the youth after. Kasi makikita talaga nila na very strong yung preparation uh, due to the soft skills training 
in the work readiness training. Um, but another way is through entrepreneurship. So, pwede rin si PMAP ng mga may micro businesses. Um, the youth could be their supply chain ano ba, providers. So, for yes, example... That's a, yeah, that, that's a very good area for them. Yes. We, we have some sites na yung we uh, conducted the design thinking for entrepreneurship boot camps. Ang haba. But mm-hmm. and, anyway, entry preparation yun. And yung pitch judges, there's a pitch competition in the in the end of the fourth day where um, PMAP actually and uh, some other organization members tapos yung um, innovation ng bata is yung parang cookies whatever, pero local um, uh, what do you call this? Ingredients. Ingredients, yes. Mm. Sila nagsusource. Sila rin nagpiprepare. Yes, oo. Oh, oh. So yeah. sabi ni private sector, uy, mayroon akong coffee shop. O oh, ikaw na yung provider ko ng cookies. So, all right, di ba? So, that's for self-employment. So, those are the two spaces where uh, private sector and PMAP can really support the youth through work immersion and towards employment and entrepreneurship uh, preparation towards self-employment. Wow. You, you process, for example, ng mga OJTs nila. Mm-mm. Are there mechanisms to make sure na hindi naman talaga, like for example, they would ask for hundreds of hours and then wala naman palang patutuguhan yung parang nagiging windmill na lang ba na okay, train yeah. lang, train lang tayo and then they pass on and they, I mean, they, pass, they move on. Mm-mm. So, what are, what are guarantees? I, I know organization like PMAP, you know, with all the ethical standards in place, they can actually monitor and demand that from their employer, from the from their members na huwag naman sanang ganun, you know. Mm-mm. But, how does, you know, the program itself Mm-mm. protects Mm-mm. from such, yeah. you know, Yes, I get that abuse. joke. Oh, <laughs> and actually, it's on both ends. So, for the youth and for the private sector, for the partners. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's a process. We prepare the youth through classroom training on work readiness. So, we tell them, ito yung mga bagay na uh, uh, behaviors in the workplace na you, you should be doing, you should not be doing. And what you used nga kanina yung term na meaningful and relevant. So, we tell the youth, look, if ipasirox kayo ng isang, you know, araw lang, okay lang yan. Don't feel bad. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it is the only thing that you're doing, but you have an NC2, for example, a TESDA certification in beauty care, sayang naman yung inaral. Oh, so, tawag, ginagawa kang runner, for example, yeah. pinapabili na kahit ano-ano. Yeah, yes. so the youth have a preparation, but the private sector also have a preparation. So process yan, we, mm-hmm. we talk to them, we even create... um ano ba tawag dito parang um, a little job description together yung program umuupo with the private sector and say ah, ano bang pwede gawin ah okay so we list it down and we present it to the youth so okay. ano siya talaga it's um it's a long process and we have tools for that so we have okay. work based learning for employers we have work based learning for the trainers or the teachers of DepEd Alce and TESDA and also for the youth so okay uh, Lahat tinitrain. <laughs> Lahat pa prepare. We're actually doing the PIMA, the People Manager Magazine online as well. And Angelique wow. would love to feature an article about Opportunity 2.0. Sure. Now, it's featured the youth and the private sector. Mm-mm. Yes. The other question as, as we round up our, our, our conversation, mm-hmm. you, what if, you know, with, with all the opportunities and success stories of, of Opportunity 2.0, Paano pa naingganyo din yung iba na kahit nag-aaral pa sila bigla, ah, alis na lang ako, plus shortcut to eh. And, and we, go, we go this way, we go this route kasi nakikita naman nila yung, yung, yung success. Like for example, ba't pa natin tatagalan? No, that we go through years and years of studying, pwede namang shortcut. <laughs> Actually, that's a good question. And ganyan talaga mag-isip ang Gen Z. Lalo pa, if kulang nga ang resources nila. Shortcut, you know, they... yes. Yeah, and an- ano ba, um, they really need to put food on the table. Or vulnerable out of school use. Malami sa kanila na talagang um, kailangan tumulong. So, Sometimes they see, oh, ang hataba naman ng education na ganyan. Yes. But, <laughs> de ba? But, magastos pa. Magastos pa. Exactly. But again, we want them to go back to the system. Kaya ang partner namin talaga is DepEd Alce and TESDA. 
Ah, so, yes. Yeah. Right. Hindi, so, hindi, uh, earlier I mentioned we just don't go to the streets and collect youth and say, okay, mag-training <laughs> ka ng two weeks. Oh, okay. oh, we want them to go back to the system and to, to really um, go through, I don't want to say rigorous, but quality, quality education and training. Yes. Mm-mm. Pero Those Sir the, Jove, the, 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 yes, talaga yes, hindi makatapos ng senior high. So, Mm-mm. minsan, kahit na after junior high, they look for jobs and we don't look down on them and say, ay, nagtrabaho na. Because again, they can always go back to Deped Alcen Tesla to re-enroll when they okay. are Okay. Yeah. I think that actually gives, uh, in, in, no, it's, it's, it goes full circle. Eh. It's not just hanggang dyan ka lang, you know, and then we leave you alone. Correct. The fact that they can go back, continue, and then improve yes. and finish something. I think that's one of the beauties of this program. Correct. Angelique, I really hope we can talk more about this. I know! And maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe we can have another, I, I'll ask Martin if we can do another episode <laughs> of this. Parang, because I, I, I'm very interested, talaga, mm-hmm. when, especially when, you know, when and I think PMAP, the members of PMAP would also be very interested in Mm-mm. yung parang individuals, hindi lang yung companies. How can right. how can they actually help by themselves? Because right. right. some of them get impatient and naghihintayin pa ng approval from the company for yeah. what they can do on their own to help Opportunity 2.0. Can we do that as a wrap-up question? Well, there are many ways. <laughs> and even if it's not through their companies, um, I know that many of you are HR professionals or even if yes. you're not, uh, you know, just as a professional, um, the you guys can be tapped to, let's say, give career uh, talks mm. in the classroom training of the youth. So, yes. iba kasi yung nakikita nila, yung end product, ay, ganyan pala ako, magigig ganyan ako. Mm-hmm. Uh, as opposed to, sorry ah, yung teachers lang nila or trainers lang nila nakikita. Iba when they see, you know, people from the workforce na talaga. So, career talks. Sometimes in our boot camps, they can also be mentors or coaches exactly, or yeah. judges. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. The likes of, you know, the P, the, the young young team of generation like Jansen and Martin, they can, oh, yes. they're so inspiring because they're still very young. Super. So, yeah, it's within reach para sa mga out of school youth natin. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes. So, thank you so much, Angelique, for making <laughs> this first episode very memorable for everybody. Wow. I, I hope I did it justice. And I of hope I did. You, did. You, USAID is our... I failed to mention that USAID is our funder. Without our, our sponsor, hindi, hindi magiging possible itong program na to. So, yes. uh, we'd like thank to thank you. USAID. Yeah. USAID. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing, not just for the Philippines, but for the rest of the world. <laughs> So, That's true. especially for the youth and marami pong salamat Angelique, uh-huh. thank you for bringing life to the program and for you sharing so your job. expertise and your passion damang daman namin yung passion nyo to help and it's Ay, contagious oh, oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you Jovan thank, thank you Pima for the opportunity and on behalf of Pima this has been People Watch and I would like to thank, of course, the team behind this. We have Sarah Niguas, Martin Alcantara, Jansen Oquico. My partner, by the way, is Joan Trump. She'll be joining us in the next episode. And with that, we say thank you. And we will have more people to watch and more learning to harvest. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.